Greetings and welcome. My name is Aaron Craig and what I want to talk to you about in this video is local variables. So first off, if you don't know what a variable is, back up, find another video. If you do, then a local video you can think of as a variable that is only available inside of a particular scope or object or loop. So a local variable is very, very useful, and it has a couple of special properties that I want to go over, and I kind of want to talk about what they are in general, and then why you might want to use them in Game Maker Studio and also in other programming languages, as they are not a Game Maker Studio specific thing. They've been around forever. So a local variable that on my machine is actually this yellow thing right here. And if you look through this program that I've got up and running right now, which is actually the first draft of my next Game Maker course, uh, I have a lot of local variables all over the place. And that's because a local variable allows you to store data, but not have it be kept around forever. Because there are a lot of times when you want to do something with a variable and have access to it during an alarm, during part of a step event or a create event or whatever, but you don't want to have access to it later to muck up your objects. Um, a really, probably the best example for that is a for loop. Inside of every for loop, basically, you want the incrementer, which here is i, to be a local variable. And the way you create a local variable is with the keyword var, which means that outside of uh, this, right now we're in alarm one, so outside of, of alarm one, I will not be accessible, you will not be able to see it, and it will not maintain, like it will not stay in this object that I have. And that's great because I don't care what I is, after I get done with this for loop, I want it to disappear. Now, this is the most common and you definitely wanna be using it here because you don't wanna have a bunch of I's, J's, S's, or whatever you use inside of your for loops hanging around forever, and I'll actually show that to you in the debugger. But what you want to also be using local variables for is when you want to do things that you just need to access inside of that one event. And here are a couple of examples. So I've got a couple of variables here that I'm passing into an object that I'm going to make. So I've got is leveling, counter, and the specific players that are leveling up. Now, when I make my object, I want to pass in this information, but I don't want to keep this information inside of this object. Now, in this particular case, it's not a very big deal because I'm going to destroy this object pretty shortly after doing all this. But if this was a persistent game object, like I have several in my game, uh, I would not want these to be stuck around forever. Let me kind of show you how this works. So inside of here, I'm going to put a break and I'm going to press F6 to open up the debugger and kind of show you how these local variables actually stick around when they do. So this is going to happen right after I kill this enemy and I can do that by just killing him right there and then pulls up the debugger over here. Now we create it and then it gets made, voila, totally like normal and you can see in the actual object itself we can see these right here, is leveling, counter, those are all, they've been created. But when we go through, and after we finish this whole section here, they are not going to be showing up in the debugger anymore because they are no longer accessible. So I'm gonna go ahead and, so I am in, uh, let's see, OBJ Battle Helper. So let's find that instance in here, down at the bottom. Let's open that up, and you can see uh, all of those uh, those local variables are not available inside of here. And that's because these variables inside of my battle helper are the ones that are going to stick around forever. The local variables, they're only here inside of this alarm one script. After that, they're gone. So if I click go through and get rid of that whole thing, you can go back here and you can see that none of those local variables stuck around. They all vanished. And that's great because I don't want them around anymore. They're not useful to me. Uh, when you have larger objects that stick around from room to room and persist for a very long time, if you don't use local variables, then 
you're going to have a ton of extra variables inside of there that eventually you might want to rename to something and it's already taken and when you do that you get a lot of errors because you think you're accessing one thing but then you redid it over there blah 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 the point is you want to be using var variable name whenever you can if that piece of variable data you don't need after your for loop, your while loop, your specific alarm, whatever it is, if you don't need to have access to it anymore, then make it a local variable and get rid of it. In a large game, that will save you a lot of data, it will speed up your game and make processing just much smoother all around. Now, there are a couple of weird things when it comes to local variables, which are also kind of cool. One of them is cool. One of them is kind of annoying. Uh, the first annoying one is when you make an array. Now, if you try to make an array in a local variable like you probably normally would, so I set zero equal to high. This is not going to work. And I don't know why. It gives you a malformed variable reference. And it just does not like it when you do this. Now, there's a couple different ways to go about it. You can then you can create the local variable on one line and then set it on another, but that's two lines of code, whereas you want to just be doing one. So the way I do that is just by creating it with an empty bracket, and you can fill it up here if you want with something. That's fine, but you have to make the array like this for some reason. I am not totally sure, but that's one of the quirks about it. So keep that in mind if you're using local variables with an array. Now, one of the kind of cool things, but it might also be annoying if you're confused by it, is you don't need to say other when accessing a local variable. So you can see down here, I have an instance that I create and I go into it with my with function or code, yeah, function. And I have variables inside of that object that I am assigning data from this object by using the keyword other. And when it comes to local variables, you don't need to do it. If you try, it's not going to work. Uh, it's going to give you that error. Well, not necessarily an error, but it's going to tell you it's only referenced once, if it is only referenced once, uh, because it's, it's not. If you try to do other dot your local variable, it's just going to fail. It will not work. Uh, again, I am not entirely sure why this is the case, but I think it's because when you say other, you're actually going into that object. It's essentially the same thing as saying, uh, let me see if I can write it here, as saying obj battle helper dot is leveling. That is not an actual variable that we have because it's only available here in alarm one. I'm pretty sure that's why that's the case. So you can't use other, which saves you uh, two seconds of typing if you can remember it. If you forget, then this might be more of an annoying thing than a nice feature. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about is the scope of local variables and then also how it's used in just general programming. So you probably understand scope already if you have ever used an if statement and you've come to the idea of, oh, I want this variable to, to be set to true, maybe like here on line 11, if this certain condition is met. And that's, you know, that makes sense. That's what everybody does. But if you try to create a local variable inside of here, uh, you can do that. But the problem is that this local variable is now actually set in scope only to this if statement. And if you try to come down here and access it, well, the game is game maker is going to allow you to try and do that because it's not as strict as other languages. But if you're doing this inside of C sharp or Java, you will get an error and your program will not compile. And the reason for that is because this is now a local variable to the scope of both this for loop, but even more so to this specific if statement. And most compilers will not allow you to try to access a variable that you make in, a, in an if statement outside of that if statement, if you haven't made it already. And that's because what happens if this if statement isn't true? Well, this variable doesn't get made 
and you come down here and now you're trying to access a variable that has not been made and you're going to crash your game. So Game Maker Studio will allow you to do that because it allows you to do pretty much anything, but it will not work and it is a very bad practice to get into. The scope of local variables is kind of the same throughout most programming languages. Uh, it is narrowed down the more if, for loops, all of those things that you use, the more narrow it gets. Inside of this if statement, if I made a variable, it would not be accessible inside of this for loop. And if I make a variable inside of this for loop, then it would not be accessible outside of it. That is the scope of local variables kind of just in general. So if you ever want to access a local variable uh, inside and outside of a for loop, you create it first and then you update it here. That way you can access it no matter what in your next section. I hope that helps. And if you have any questions about local variables or scope, I would love to hear them and you can uh, leave them down in the comments below and I will get back to you. I am working on my next Game Maker course and I found myself using local variables all of the time and realized I haven't had a real discussion on them. I know I've mentioned them, talked about them in some of my videos, but I wanted to have a more in-depth discussion because as a programmer, it's a very good thing to understand both local variables and scope of variables because that's something that's in all languages for the most part uh, and it's just good knowledge to have. So I hope that was helpful. I hope you enjoyed it and that's what I've got for you. So as always, have fun making great games and I will talk to you later.